<sighs> it is Parshat Re'eh. Parshat Re'eh, as I mentioned before, is an invitation to live with equanimity, to balance life with all of its challenges, and to celebrate that release into our essential nature, which is if do it Hashem besimcha, if do it Hashem besimcha, bo lefana vabir na na, lefana vabir na na. If do it Hashem besimcha, if do it Hashem besimcha, bo lefana vabir na na, lefana vabir na na. Ay ay ay, ay ay la la, ay ay la la, ay ay. Serve Yah with joy. Come into Yah's presence with shouts of gladness. This is the first line from Psalm 100. If do et Hashem besimcha, serve the one with joy. This lifts up the important role of happiness, the role of joy in cultivating a healthy life. Ah, easy for me to say, and pointed out by the late Rabbi Jonathan Sachs of blessed memory, it is hard to serve God in joy. We're not always happy, and perhaps that might invite us into a different understanding and perhaps a difference between what we mean when we say joy and happiness. Now, simcha is a word for joy, usually translated as joy, as we've been discussing here, but also sometimes rejoicing, gladness, also happiness, also pleasure and delight. Now, Rabbi Sachs points out, in fact, simcha, this word, has a nuance that is untranslatable in English. Joy, happiness, pleasure, delight, they're all states of mind. They're emotions. They belong to each of us individually. We can feel them alone. Simcha, by contrast, is not a private emotion. It means happiness that is shared. It is a social state, a predicate of we, not I. There is no such thing as feeling simcha alone. Renee and I are going to a simcha on Monday, the wedding of the son of very close friends of ours, and we are so psyched to be able to help him celebrate at the Simcha, a communal offering. So, back here to Rabbi Sachs. And to different kinds of celebrations at different kinds of weddings. I suspect the wedding we go to on Monday is not going to look like this. <laughs> In fact, I think it's going to look a little bit more like this. And perhaps, like the next slide I'm going to show you, which actually Re Renee and I experienced once at a wedding where my band was playing, where <laughs> all of the guests threw the groom up into the air. They didn't throw the, the kala into the air. They threw the groom <laughs> into the air and caught him in a big mosh pit below. So why am I talking so much about Simcha on this Parshat Re'eh? Ta-da, drum roll, it's because there are different roots of this word simcha, meaning the things that I mentioned before. And this word simcha is mentioned a multiple of times in our parsha. It's 12 times in the book of Dar of Devarim, seven times in our parsha. Here are three of the times they're mentioned in our parsha. V'yachaltem sham lifnei Adonai Eloichem v'samachtem b'chol mishlach yedchem. 
together with your households. You shall feast there before your God, your Devave, rejoicing. You notice in the green highlighted, uh, Shin Mem Chet, right? Sameach. That's the word for joy or rejoicing in all the undertakings in which God, Yudhei Vavai, has blessed you. Another example from this week's parsha: Usamachtem lifnei Adonai Elohechem atem b'vneichem uvenotechem. You shall rejoice before your God, Yudhei Vavai, with your sons and your daughters. V'samachta bechagecha, v'samachta bechagecha. You shall rejoice in your festival. Three times of the seven that this root for Sameach that is used in this week's Parsha alone. This beautiful artwork by an artist by the name of Joanne Fink, many of you I'm sure are familiar with her work. Joy and sorrow are not mutually exclusive. In much the same way that we are to hold the fact that the world was made for us and that we are dust made of dust and ash, we are also to hold these two things, joy and sorrow, at the same time. In fact, in his book, Rabbi Arthur Green, his book, Tormented Master, The Life and Spiritual Quest of Reb Nachman of Bratslav, you know, Reb Nachman, he had a tough life. And he lived with a lot of, lot of demons in his head and in his heart. And yet, lifted up the, in, insisted that joy be above everything. But I don't think he's referring to the ha, 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 let's have a good time joy. That joy is part of our DNA. It is part of our inherent nature, B'Tselem Elohim, that we are made in the image of God, and joy is a part of that. In fact, in his book, quoting Reb Nachman of Bratzlav, Rabbi Green shares with us an analogy. Reb Nachman teaches that sometimes when people are happy and dance, they grab someone standing outside the circle who is depressed and gloomy. And against that person's will, they bring them into the circle of dancers. Against their will, they force them to be happy along with them. It is the same with happiness, Reb Nachman continues. When a person is happy, gloom and suffering stand aside. Remember, before when I quoted Rabbi Sachs, he said, it is hard, it is hard to serve God with simcha, with joy. Reb Nachman continues, greater still is to gather courage, to actually pursue gloom, to go after it and introduce it to joy. Hey, gloom, why don't you meet joy? Perhaps you have something to learn from joy, such that the gloom itself turns into joy. Behind the klipa, the shell of the darkness sometimes of gloom, resides the light, the light of joy. A person, it is up to each and every one of us to transform gloom and all suffering into joy. It is like a person who comes to a celebration, the abundant joy and happiness then transforms all their worries, depression and gloom into joy. And we find that they have grabbed the gloom and introduced it introduced it against its will into the joy as in the aforementioned analogy. Again, serving God with joy is not easy. It is hard to locate this place, certainly in the times that we are living. This is part of our holy task. Reb Nachman teaches that the pathway to our true destiny is joy. And Rabbi David Cooper, in his book, God is a Verb, offers 10 practices to warm the heart and fill the soul with joy. I want to invite you to do one of these things, one of these things as your practice this week, whatever resonates the most with you. Listen to the music that moves your soul. Play some music you love and move your body for 20 minutes. 
okay, we're getting old, maybe 10. Spend time in nature. Be selective in how you spend your time, in the food you eat, in the things you read, especially the news. Browse through a bookstore with no objective in mind. Play, ride a swing, hug a tree, lie in the grass, not thinking about adult things. Go to a museum. Fully plan a trip, even if you will never even go on that trip. Plan one. Soak in the tub. And last, speak words of thanks to God, to others, to yourself. Reflecting on shelter, food, safety, your physical gifts, friends. See how many things you can give thanks for. And so, my holy friends, a blessing for this week on this Shabbos Re'eh. May we find joy through our sorrow. And may this holy community, along with your spiritual practices, serve to provide us with the strength and the courage to transform sadness into joy. Shabbat Shalom.